Hello, I'm Kevin Rowling with the Tire Industry Association. And I'm Doug Jones with Mission of North America. This video will cover the commercial vehicle inspection guidelines that are more important than ever now that the compliance, safety, accountability, or CSA program is in place. CSA is a new initiative from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, or FMCSA, to improve large truck and bus safety in order to reduce the number of accidents involving commercial motor vehicles. By creating a new Safety Measurement System, or SMS, FMCSA is able to measure the on-road safety performance of carriers and drivers to identify candidates for intervention and monitor whether safety problems are improving or worsening. The SMS uses the data from roadside inspections, safety-based violations, and the Federal Motor Carrier Census to quantify performance in seven different behavior analysis and safety improvement categories, or BASICs. The BASICs are unsafe driving, which covers speeding, reckless driving, improper lane change, and other moving violations. Fatigued driving, which addresses hours of service violations and incomplete or inaccurate logbooks. Driver fitness, which focuses on the lack of training, experience, or the failure to produce a medical card. Controlled substances alcohol, which covers the use or possession of drugs and or alcohol, including prescription medication. Vehicle maintenance, which covers Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulation Parts 393, 396, and Appendix G. Cargo related, which addresses improperly secured, overloaded, or spilled cargo. And the crash indicator, which considers the carrier's crash history and includes the frequency and severity. Individual violations within each BASIC are assigned a severity rating that ranges from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most severe and the most likely to cause an accident. The majority of the 10-point violations are directly related to the driver and include moving violations, out-of-service driving, and the failure to properly secure cargo. Vehicle maintenance violations also range from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most severe. But an additional two points are added if an out-of-service violation is present. The severity rating is then multiplied by a time-weight factor. The sum of the time and severity weighted violation is then divided by the total time weight of all relevant inspections to determine the basic measurement. After the measurements in each category are determined, the carrier is placed in a peer group that has a similar number of inspections. The carrier is then given a percentile ranging from 0 to 100 by comparing basic measurements. A percentile of 100 indicates the worst performance. Since the carrier and the driver both receive an SMS score in each basic, law enforcement officials know which categories are in need of improvement so they can direct inspections to the areas that will have the biggest impact on safety. In order to get a better idea of how the SMS works in the field, we've asked Captain Douglas Shackelford of the North Carolina State Highway Patrol to walk us through a typical roadside inspection. Captain Shackelford, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Hello, I'm Captain Douglas Shackelford with the Motor Carrier Enforcement Section of the North Carolina State Highway Patrol. CSA gives me the tools to know where to look every time I inspect a commercial motor vehicle. If an SMS score is one or more basic starts to approach the intervention threshold, it's a sign for law enforcement officials to pay particular attention to that category. For example, if I see that the SMS score for fatigue driving is in a higher percentile, this driver can be certain that I will carefully inspect his logbook. But today, I want to talk about the vehicle inspection components so drivers will have a better understanding on how to conduct a pre-trip inspection and avoid violations. According to FMCSR Part 393, the following parts and accessories must be inspected for safe operation prior to each trip. Lamps, reflective devices, and electrical wiring. Brakes glazing and window construction, fuel systems, including compressed natural gas fuel containers and liquefied petroleum gas systems, coupling devices and towing methods, 
miscellaneous parts and accessories, including tires, windshield wipers, and rear impact guards. Emergency equipment. Protection against shifting and falling cargo, including specific securement requirements by commodity type and frames, cab and body components, wheels, steering and suspension systems. For the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on tires. So let's take a look at the federal regulations for tires on a commercial motor vehicle. According to FMCSR 393.75, no motor vehicle can be operated if any tire exhibits the following conditions. Exposed body ply or belt material through the tread or sidewall tread or sidewall separation, flat tire or a tire with an audible leak, or has a cut where the ply or belt material is exposed. In most cases, a vehicle will be placed out of service if any of these conditions are present. However, there are some exceptions. For example, if a bulge on the sidewall is accompanied by a small blue triangle indicating a repair, then the vehicle can remain in service without a violation as long as the bulge does not exceed three-eighths of an inch in height. It's also important to note that the tread on the front wheels of a bus, truck, or truck tractor must have at least four thirty seconds of an inch tread depth at any point on any major groove. The measurements cannot be made where tread wear indicators or stone ejectors are located. If one spot on a major groove measures less than 4 30 seconds of an inch, then the driver can be ticketed. All other tires must have at least 2 30 seconds of an inch tread depth in a major groove with the same restrictions regarding tread wear indicators, stone ejectors, and the number of locations. If the tread depth is less than the limit established by 393.75, then the driver will be cited for a violation and assess points under CSA. However, the vehicle will be placed out of service with the additional two points if the tread depth is below the limits set by the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance or CVSA. CVSA is a partnership of law enforcement officials and industry leaders from the United States, Canada and Mexico. It sets the out-of-service conditions for components on commercial motor vehicles, including tires. According to CVSA, if the tread depth on a steer tire has less than 2 30 seconds of an inch tread depth when measured in two adjacent major grooves at any location on the tire, then an out-of-service violation exists and the vehicle cannot be moved until the problem is corrected. In this example, the tread depth measurements indicate that there is less than 2 30 seconds of an inch in multiple spots on the same major groove but the other grooves do not have any spots below 230 seconds. It's also important to note that the decoupler groove at the shoulder is not a major groove, so it does not apply in this instance. While this tire is in violation of 393.75, the vehicle should not be placed out of service. It's also important to note that if a tire on any other position is worn to the point where less than 1 32nd of an inch tread depth is measured in any two adjacent grooves at three separate locations, at least eight inches apart around the circumference of the tire, the vehicle will be placed out of service. On the other hand, there are a number of conditions that are often misinterpreted as being in violation of 393.75 or out of service according to CVSA. For example, this tire has at least 4 30 seconds of an inch tread depth in every major groove, but the decoupling groove has no measurable tread depth. The tire is not in violation of 393.75 or considered out of service by CVSA because the decoupling groove is not a major groove. And while this drive tire has extensive irregular wear, all of the major grooves are at least 2 30 seconds of an inch in tread depth. Therefore, it is not illegal and can remain in service. This rule also applies to missing tread chunks. As long as the tread depth in the major grooves is within the limits established by 393.75 and the missing tread does not expose the ply material, the tire should not be sighted or placed out of service. Another condition that is often misinterpreted as illegal or out of service is weather checking. 
In this instance, the weather checking does not extend to the sidewall plies, so the tire can remain in service. There are also restrictions specific to tires on the front wheels of a bus. FMCSR 393.754D states, no bus shall be operated with regrooved, recapped, or retreaded tires on the front wheels. These restrictions also apply to CVSA inspections, so passenger carrying vehicles with regrooved, recapped, or retreaded tires on the front axle will be placed out of service. And while there are no restrictions that prohibit the use of retreaded tires on the steer axles of commercial motor vehicles other than buses, FMCSR 393.754E states, a re-grooved tire with a load carrying capacity equal to or greater than 4,920 pounds shall not be used on the front wheels of any truck or truck tractor. Almost all of these conditions carry a severity rating of eight points if they are found during a roadside inspection. Let's take a look at how a typical flat tire is scored under the SMS. In this example, the tire has less than 50% of the maximum inflation pressure marked on the sidewall, so an out-of-service condition exists. The driver and fleet will be assessed the eight points for the flat tire plus an additional two points for the out-of-service violation. The maximum score for any single violation within an individual basic is 30. The score is then divided by the total time weight of relevant inspections, and the basic measure is then compared against other fleets with a similar number of inspections. After comparing the basic measures, each fleet is assigned an SMS score within each area. In this example, Fleet A has a vehicle maintenance score of 13.20, which means they are in the top 20% when compared to similar fleets. On the other end of the spectrum, Fleet E has a score of 79.30, which means 79% of the fleets have better scores. It's also important to note that a score of 79.30 exceeds the intervention threshold, so this fleet should expect targeted inspections on a regular basis. SMS scores reflect a 24-month average, so they change to some degree from month to month. For these fleets, the vehicle maintenance scores improved for Fleet A and Fleet C, but the scores for Fleet B and Fleet D got worse. In the case of Fleet E, the worsening score could be caused by additional violations due to the targeted inspections or the other fleets in their peer group just did a better job in that particular basic. Either way, it will take months for Fleet E to bring their score below the intervention threshold. The scores for every fleet with a US DOT number or motor carrier number can be found online at the following website. As you can see, enforcement officers are now equipped with a valuable tool for determining the overall safety performance of any fleet we inspect. And since the CSA snapshot is based on real-time inspections and data, we know exactly where to look and have complete confidence when identifying violations that will improve safety on our nation's highways. By performing a thorough pre- and post-trip inspection, drivers can improve safety performance and avoid costly delays and citations. We hope the tire inspection guidelines that we've covered in this video will help you comply with federal regulations and improve your vehicle maintenance scores under CSA. For the Tire Industry Association, I'm Kevin Rowling. And for Michelin North America, I'm Doug Jones. Thanks for watching.